going to need training treats. I like to cut mine up ahead of time, place them in the freezer, and then all I have to do is pull out one little snack size um, Ziploc bag and it has that session's training treats already prepared. You can use uh, something like cheese or beef or chicken, um, anything that will cut up that, that won't crumble real bad. Um, if your dog eats kibble, you can use part of their meal to train for. I like like real food that I can keep in my mouth um, as a training treat. And we're gonna sh I'm going to show you that technique a little bit later. But what I'll do is cut them up in real small bite-sized pieces. So it has to be something that I can tolerate as well. It could be hot dogs, um, like I said, any kind of meat. Um, my favorite to use is actual meatballs. You can buy these meatballs frozen in your grocery store. And I cut one of these meatballs up into about eight tiny bite-sized pieces. My dogs love to work for meatballs. So once you've cut those up, um, like I said, do enough for the entire week or so, and just stick them in the freezer, and then you're ready to go at a moment's notice. No excuses. Another thing I try to do is make an appointment with my dogs to train. I might do a 15-minute training session, might be a little bit more, might be less, but I try to be consistent, and if I say at 5 o'clock after work I'm going to train my dogs, I try to keep that as an appointment that I would make with anyone else. So try to set aside two times a week at least to train your dogs. Again, you'll have your treats all ready. Um, you can keep them in the refrigerator or the freezer. They're ready to thaw out in probably an hour or two. So you'll want to have those ready so you don't have the excuse. If I'm training for an event, I probably train anywhere from five to six days a week. However, if we're just doing a project um, here for class, and just working on a dance um, for ourselves, I might train three to four times a week. I don't expect you to put that kind of professional time in, so if you make it twice a week, you're doing really well. So let's talk about space next. You'll need a size space that's about, I would say, a minimum of 10 by 10. This is actually probably about 12 by 8, and I can work quite a few behaviors here um, and quite a few skills right here in this room with Annabelle. Ready, Eddie? That a girl. So we do a lot of practicing here. I also do a lot of practicing in the garage, which I'll show you next. But you could use a patio outside. Um, you can use a front yard. Um, any place that would be safe. I want you to, to really feel secure with your dog. Um, you can work them on leash or off leash. It's up to you. Um, so you don't need a lot of room at first. If you continue on into the sport of freestyle, you'll need um, considerable room to move. But for this class, I would say a, a 10 by 10, 8 by 10 would be fine. Now I know everyone doesn't have a garage dog dance studio, but this is where I do most of my rehearsing and my training um, and my choreography. This is a, a two car garage um, that I actually have matting on the floor um, so the dogs will have some traction. But this is where I do most of my work and I would say it's probably an um, maybe an 18 by 20 um, and the washer and dryer and things are out here too so there isn't quite that much room but this this is plenty to use um, even when I'm creating uh, routines for the sport of canine freestyle this is where I do most of my training so any actually any place that you feel safe and secure will work for you you don't have to have your own garage dog dance studio um, but this is a wonderful space because it stays cool enough in the summer until about 10 in the morning for me, yet I can train all winter whether it's raining or, or no matter what the weather conditions are like. So um, this, is, this is a way to take what you've got and create a working space from it.
see you soon with the very first lesson.